In this video, we will discuss Dirichlet's theorem on primes in arithmetical progressions. Uh, firstly, we know uh, the arithmetical progression of odd numbers, that is 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on. It contains infinitely many prime numbers, uh, 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on, 2n plus 1 and so on. So this is arithmetical progression of odd numbers and we know except to all the primes are odd so this contains infinitely many primes. Uh, now we have uh, this question uh, that any arithmetical progression let us say with first term h and common difference k that consists of how many primes uh, let us say this is the arithmetical progression k n plus h where n is varying from 0 1 2 and so on now this arithmetical progression has first term yeah uh, this is has first term h and uh, common difference k now how many primes this arithmetical progression contains our question is this so now let us say k and h have a common factor let us say d if d is a common factor of h and k means if d divides h as well as k then what will happen then each term k n plus h of this arithmetical progression that will be divided by d then d divides k n plus h that means if d is greater than 1 then there is no prime in this um, arithmetic progression except h if it is prime means we can say there exist not more than one prime in this uh, progression if d is greater than one and that one prime can be h if h is prime kn plus one uh, sorry kn plus h can't have more than one primes this arithmetic progression k n plus h this contains not more than one primes if d is greater than one That means it is necessary condition for the existence of infinitely many primes in this arithmetical progression k n plus 1 is that the GCD of h and k should be 1. So a necessary condition for the existence of infinitely many primes in arithmetic progression k n plus h is that gcd of h and k is 1 now trichley proved uh, that this condition is also sufficient which means if uh, GCD of H and K is 1, then there exist infinitely many pr uh, primes in this arithmetical progression K n plus H. And this theorem is known as Dirichlet's theorem. We will prove this theorem in this chapter later on. So firstly, uh, we prove some particular cases of Dirichlet's theorem. Uh, let us prove firstly for the primes of the type 4 and minus 1 and 4 and plus 1. So there are infinitely many primes of the type 4 and minus 1. Means there are infinitely many primes in the arithmetic progression 
फोर एंड माइनस वन सो वी विल प्रूव इट बाई कॉन्ट्राडिक्शन फर्स्टली अज्यूम दैट देयर एग्जिस्ट ए फाइनेट नंबर ऑफ सच प्राइम लेट देयर बी only a finite number of such prime and suppose p is the largest now consider integer n which is 2 square into 3 to 5 7 and so on up to p minus 1 Now this product three seven five up to p this contains all the primes, all the odd primes up to p. Now because this product contains all the primes, all the odd primes less than equals to p as factors, and n is equal to four into this product minus one, so n cannot be prime because n is greater than p. Now since n is greater than p and n is of the type 4 and minus 1 and we are saying that p is the largest prime of the type 4 and minus 1 so n cannot be prime second thing no prime less than equals to p divides n means no prime out of these primes 3 5 7 up to p cannot divide n because if any prime divides n then that prime divides this factor also then that prime should divide 1 but that is impossible so no prime out of these primes 3 5 7 up to p divides n so all the prime factors of n they exceed p all prime factors But all of the prime factors of n cannot be of the form four n plus one, because if we multiply any two numbers of the form four n plus one, then their product is also of the type four n plus one. But n is of the type four n minus one, so it means it has some factors of the type four n minus one. So we can write here all of the prime factors of n. cannot be of the form 4n plus 1 because the product of factors of type 4n plus 1 is again a number of type 4n plus 1 so it means it has some factors of the type 4n minus 1 now we are saying n itself is not a prime and all the prime factors of n they must exceed p because no prime less than equals to p divides n and we are saying some prime factors of n must be of the type 4n minus 1 that means there exist primes of the type 4n minus 1 which are exceeding p and that is a contradiction so there exist infinitely many primes of the type 4n minus 
so therefore n must have factors prime factors of the type 4n minus 1 and this is a contradiction so there exist infinitely many primes of the type 4n minus 1 so next we will prove there exist infinitely many primes of the type 4n plus 1 and uh, the proof is little bit different from the previous result there are infinitely many primes of the type 4n plus 1 So in this theorem we will prove that for any given integer n there always exists a prime p greater than n which is of the type 4n plus 1. So for every integer there exists a bigger prime of the type 4n plus 1 that means there exist infinitely many primes of this type. So let n be any integer. obviously greater than 1 we will assume here so we will prove there exist a prime p greater than n of the type 4n plus 1 now let m be any integer which is n factorial square plus 1 for this given integer n, we have formed m which is equal to n factorial square plus 1. Now m is odd because n is greater than 1. So n factorial that will always contain 2. So this is even factor plus 1. So m is odd. Therefore m is and also m is greater than 1 because it is something positive plus 1. Now let p be the smallest prime factor of m. Let p be the smallest prime factor of m so this p is our required p because we want to prove there exist p greater than n of the type 4 n plus 1 so this is smallest prime factor of m now any number between 2 3 up to n cannot divide m the numbers 2 3 up to n cannot divide m because if any number out of these numbers divides m then this number divides n factorial also then this number should divide 1 so the numbers 2 3 up to n cannot divide m and we are saying p is the smallest prime factor and these numbers cannot divide m so it means p is greater than n And now we are saying p is factor of m it means p divides m that means p divides this so p also p divides m this means p divides n factorial square plus 1 which means n factorial square is congruent to minus 1 modulo p now we raise uh, p minus 1 by 2 powers on both sides so we will get n factorials raised to p minus 1 is congruent to minus 1 raised to p minus 1 by 2 mod p. Now we have this result by euler format theorem. This says if a and p they are co prime to each other then a raised to p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p where p is a prime so here p is a prime so if a and p are congruent to 1 then a raised to p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p now here n factorial and p they are co prime because no no number between 2 3 up to n cannot divide m so n factorial p cannot divide n factorial 
since p is bigger than n also uh, so we can apply this euler fermat theorem here so by euler fermat theorem we have this result n factorial raised to p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p so from this equation and this equation we can conclude that minus 1 raised to p minus 1 by 2 is congruent to 1 modulo p so 1 and 2 imply minus 1 raised to p minus 1 by 2 is congruent to 1 modulo p now this number minus 1 raised to something this can have two values either minus 1 or plus 1 that depends on uh, p minus 1 is even or odd now minus 1 raised to p minus 1 by 2 if it is uh, let us say minus 1 then minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p that means p divides 2 but that is impossible because p is a prime bigger than n and p is odd prime because m is odd so uh, that is impossible that means uh, this minus 1 raised to p minus 1 by 2 has value equal to 1 that means this is even so minus 1 raised to this is equal to 1 so we can write here the reason because if it is equal to minus 1 then minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p implies p divides 2 but that is impossible so this is 1 so if this is 1 that means p minus 1 by 2 is even if this is even that means p minus 1 or we can say p p minus 1 is even which means let us say p minus 1 is of is equal to 2k say the p is equal to p minus 1 by 2 is 2k so p is equal to 4k plus 1 so p is of the type 4k plus 1 and we are saying p is greater than n and p is prime so for any given integer n we have proved that there exists a prime p which is greater than n and it is of the type 4k plus 1 so there exist infinitely many integers in infinitely many primes in the arithmetical progression for n plus 1